why does Islam allow polygamy, a man to have more than one wife? A similar question is asked by another brother. I am Qasim from Nigeria, Borno State. I want to ask you a question pertaining to the logic of marrying more than one wife. You answered so many times during your lecture and we have Christian friends that used to challenge us on this issue. Can you please with due respect help me with the quotation of polygamy in Christianity, especially that of Prophet Abraham and Prophet Solomon, peace be upon them. The question posed by Brother Shakir is a very common question that why does Islam allow polygamy, a man to have more than one wife? And the question posed by Qasim that he has heard my answer but can I give reference especially on Christianity saying that Prophet Abraham and Solomon had many wives, can I give the quotation? As far as polygamy is concerned, polygamy means a person having more than one spouse. There are two types of polygamy. If a man has more than one wife, it's called as polygyny and if a woman has more than one husband, it's called as polyandry. So polyandry, a woman having more than one husband is prohibited in Islam. As far as polygyny is concerned, a man having more than one wife, limited polygyny is permitted in Islam. As far as Islam is concerned, Quran is the only religious book on the face of the earth which says marry only one wife. There is no other religious scripture on the face of the earth, whether it be the Hindu scripture, the Jewish scripture or, or the Christian scripture, whether it be the Mahabharat or the Ramayana or the Vedas or Bhagavad Gita or the Talmud or the Bible where it says marry only one wife. In fact, if you read the Hindu scriptures, if you read Ramayana, the father of Sri Ram, King Dashrath, he had more than one wife. If you read Mahabharat, Sri Krishna, who is the god of the Hindus, it is mentioned he had 16,108 wives. So if Krishna, Lord Krishna of the Hindus can have 16,108 wives, so why can't Muslim have maximum four? Similarly, in the Christian faith, in the Christian church, you are, in Christianity, you are allowed to marry as many wives as you want. It's recently that the Christian church has prohibited and said the Christian can only marry one wife. In, in the Jewish community, it was permitted. If you read the scriptures, if you read the Bible or the Talmud, Abraham had three wives regarding the references. If you read Genesis, chapter number 11, verse number 29, it says that Sarah was the wife of Abraham, peace be upon him. It is mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter number 16, verse number 3, that Sarah, the wife of Abraham, hired an Egyptian maid by the name of Hajar or Hagar. And later on, she gave her in marriage as a wife to Abraham, peace be upon him. Further is mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter number 25, verse number 1, that Keturah was the wife of Abraham. So based on these three verse, different verses of the Bible, we come to know that Abraham, peace be upon him, was a prophet of God, according to the Bible, had three wives. If you read the first Kings, first epistle of King, chapter number 11, verse number 3, it says that Solomon had 700 wives. So according to the Bible, the prophets of God had more than one wife. Some had three, some had more. Solomon had 700 wives. So according to Christianity and Judaism, they were permitted to marry as many wives as they want. There was no upper limit. As I mentioned, later on the church said that Christian should have only one wife. And as far as the Jews are concerned, the Jews married more than one wife. It was only when Rabbi Gershem ben Yehuda, who lived from 960 to 1030, he passed an edict 
that Jews should marry only one wife. And in the Sephardic communities, the Jewish Sephardic communities who lived amongst the Muslims, they married more than one wife till as late as 1950 until the chief rabbi of Israel put a ban on it. That means according to Christianity and Judaism, you can marry as many as you want. Recently, there was a ban put that you should only marry one. Similarly, if you read in the statistics published in India, on the status of women in Islam, page number 65, 66 and 67, it says that the Hindus in India from 1951 to 1961, 5.06% involved in polygamous marriages. And Muslims, only 4.31% were involved in polygamous marriages. That means, in India, the Hindus had 0.75% more polygamous marriages as compared to Muslims. Hindus were 5.06%. Muslims were 4.31%, that means 0.75% the Hindus did more polygamous marriages as compared to Muslims in India. And you know, in India, it was earlier permitted, it was only in 1954 under the Special Marriage Act, Hindu Special Marriage Act, that Hindus were only permitted to marry one wife. Before that, they could marry as many as they want. So even though when it became illegal from 1954 for Hindu women to marry more than one wife, yet from 1951 to 61, the Hindus were involved with more polygamous marriages as compared to Muslims. So basically, according to all the other religions, you can marry as many as you wish. But in Islam, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, number 3, marry women of a choice in twos, threes or fours, but if you can't do justice, marry only one. So this statement, marry only one, is only given in the Quran and no other, no other religious scripture. So the Quran says, marry women of a choice in twos, threes or fours, but if you can't do justice, marry only one. And Quran further says in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse number 29, verse number 129, that it is difficult for man to do justice between his eyes. But do not turn away from them altogether. I mean, do not neglect them altogether. As they are, you know, keeping them, hanging them in the air. So here the Quranic verse says, it's difficult to be, for a man to be just between his wives. But don't turn away from them altogether. That means, if you marry more than one wife, you can marry two, three or maximum five. But see to it, you do justice. If you can't do justice, you should not marry. And it says that marrying more, doing justice is difficult. So in the ruling of Islam, there are five categories. Something which is fard compulsory, something which is mustab that is encouraged, something which is muba, which is permissible or optional, something which is makrut discouraged, and lastly something which is haram prohibited. So many of the non-Muslims think marrying more than one wife is compulsory. Some know it's not compulsory it would be in the MOBA category or the optional category. Many people think in India that, you know, 80% of the Muslims marry more than one wife. They marry four wives. It's totally wrong. In fact, in India, as I told you, the percentage is only 4%. And in Malaysia, it may be a little bit more. In the Gulf countries also, what's the percentage? If you do a survey, some of the countries, 10% of the Muslim men have more, more than one wife. 15, some may be 20%. On an average, if you look at, there are more than 2 billion Muslims in the world. The average of Muslims marrying more than one wife will surely be in single digit. Would be less than 10%. So it's a misconception that majority of the Muslims marry more than one wife. It's wrong. Majority, more than 90% have only one wife. Less than 10% have more than one wife. Let us analyze what is the logic that Islam has given permission for some of the Muslim men to marry more than one wife. By nature, men and women, male and female, should be born 
on an equal proportion. But unfortunately, if we analyze the ratio of the sex ratio at birth, most of the countries in the world, the male are born more as compared to the females. Why? Because science and technology are advanced. Even in the advanced country like USA, for every for every thousand female born, there are five males born more at birth. So for every thousand female born, one thousand five male are born. Why? Even though it's an advanced country, yet they prefer having male children than females. So most of the country, the male are born more. But in some of the country, the ratio is drastically different. And India is one of the countries where there was an article that came in Al Jazeera in 2015 that every day in India, 7,000 fetuses are either being aborted or females after they are born are being killed. Every day in India alone, more than 7,000 female fetuses are being aborted or female children are being killed after they are born. If you multiply this figure by 365, the number of days, more than two and a half million females every year in India are either aborted before they are born or immediately after they are born, they are being killed. And India has the second largest population in the world. And very shortly, it will even overtake China. According to the World Factbook, the Worldometer, India today has 1.399 billion people living. Some statistics say it has even crossed China. China today has about 1.42 billion people living. Within very shortly, within a few months, India will overtake. Some statistics have said India is already overtaking China. China again, at birth, there are more females, there are less females as compared to males. So India and China put together, they constitute 35% of the world population. India is close to 1.4 billion, China is 1.4 billion. So 2.8 billion out of 8 billion is 35% of the world population. And if in these two countries, if female feticide and female infanticide is stopped, the world population of females will be much more as compared to males. Today, today in spite in USA, males being born more, today medical science tells us that the female child can fight the germs and diseases better than the male child. So in the pediatric age itself, there are more male children dying as compared to female children. As life goes on, there are deaths due to cigarette scope. Dead due to cigarette smoking, dead due to alcoholism, dead due to diseases. There are more male dying as compared to female. Deaths are due to war. So in all these cases, there are more male dying as compared to female. So because of this, because the female is medically a stronger sex, the female has better immunity as compared to male. And males are dying more as compared to in alcoholism, in cigarette smoking, in war, etc the female lives longer than male. Today, the average lifespan of a male is 68.9 years old. In different countries, it varies. Japan, it is more. Other parts of the world, it's less. But the average of the full world is males on average live for 68.9 years old and females live for 74.9 years old. In Japan, the age of a female is more than 60, something 87 and male is 82, but average of the full world. So females on average live five years more than males. Percentage wise, the females live 7% more than the males. In spite of this, that the males are born more in USA because of ultrasonography, modern method, even though it's an advanced country, yet people prefer having males more than males. Not as much as India, but yet According to statistics of 2015, according to the World Factbook, according to CIA, 
In USA alone, there were 4.8 million females more than males. In New York alone, there were half million females more than males. In Germany alone, there was 1.2 million females more than males. In Bangladesh alone, in 2015, towards the end of the year, there were 4.2 million females more than males. In Russia alone, there were 10.2 million females more than males. In European Union, of all the 28 countries put together, in 2015, there were 10 million females more than male in these 28 European countries. And God knows how many millions are more than males all over the world. But because some countries, female infanticide and family planning is there, and two most populated countries, India and Pakistan, sorry, India and China, in these two countries alone, at the birth rate, at the time of birth, the females are very few as compared to male. Maybe 8% less, 10% less or much more. But by the time that the end before, the latest statistics says in 2023, when Indian population is 1.399 million, 6% females, 6% males are more than females. At birth, they may be 8, 10 or 12 percent female less. But since female outgrow the male, the average 6 percent males are more than females. That means there may be 84 million approximately females less than the males in India and a similar number of a bigger number may be in China. So in these two countries, so now if we see the average percentage of male and female is approximately the same. But if this evil act in India and China stop, there will be hundreds of millions more than males, hundreds of millions of females more than males throughout the world. As of today, as we know, this was statistics of 2015 that 4.8 million females are more than males. Some statistics today say there are 10 million females more than males in USL. So if suppose my sister or your sister happens to be living in USA and she happens to be one of the 4.8 million females in 2015 or maybe one of the 10 million females in USA today who has not found a life partner. So the only option for her is that she either marries a man who already has a wife or becomes public property. Some people may say, public property? Dr. Zakir, you are using such a harsh word. I said it is the most sophisticated word I can use. You either marry a man who already has a wife or become public property. In USA, it's common on an average a man, before settling with a wife, he has on an average eight different sexual partners. Some may have two, some may have ten, some may have twenty. On an average, an American, before he settles down, before he marries a woman, he has eight different sexual partners. After he marries, how many he has is not mentioned in the statistics. So in USA, having girlfriends and mistresses is common. Five, ten, twenty, no problem. But Having more than one legal wife, it cannot go down their throat. It's not legal. Now, when you have mistresses, five or ten mistresses, the woman is not protected. A woman is a mistress. A woman who is a mistress of a man, she doesn't have legal rights. She is not protected. She is dishonored. She is looked down upon. She doesn't get her rights. She is humiliated. On the other hand, if a wife is the second wife of a man, she gets protected, she gets the legal rights, she gets inheritance, she is honored, she looked up with respect. So which is better? So but natural, a good human being who is modest, a woman, if she has this two choice, should she marry a man who already has a husband, should she marry a man who already has a wife or become public property, she would choose the first one. It's logical. So this is one of the major, one of the reasons 
that Islam has permitted a man to have more than one wife, as long as it has justice. But there are various other reasons. I'll just mention a few more. Suppose a man has married a wife and they cannot conceive. So what's the option? If you cannot marry, you'll have to divorce her and then marry a new wife. And then have children. If you want to have children. In Islam, if a woman cannot bear children, it's not her fault. What he can do, he can keep her and take another wife. From which he can have children. And if a woman wants to have child and she cannot have child, and if the husband marries another wife and have children, so one of the other reasons is that if they cannot bear children, then very well, he doesn't have to divorce the first wife. He can keep her first wife, who is good otherwise, and marry another wife and have children. There can be a case, maybe after marriage, within a few months, the wife may have accident. And then she cannot do, do the role of a wife. She may not be able to sexually satisfy her because of the accident. So in this case, what he can do? He cannot live without having sexual relationship. So if he cannot marry a second wife, he'll have to divorce her. Imagine now she has a, have a problem. She had accident. It's no fault of hers. And to divorce her. So in Islam, what he can do? He can keep the first wife and marry a second wife. In this case, the second wife will satisfy the sexual needs. And yet he maintains the first wife and looks after both equally. There can be a case that the wife may have some medical illness, may have some sickness in which she cannot sexually satisfy the husband. So in this case, he doesn't have to divorce her. He can keep her and marry another wife. And both can be wife of the person. And he gets the sexual satisfaction. Here he takes care of the first wife. So there are various reasons that Islam has permitted a man to have more than one wife. And all of these are logical reasons. So Islam is a practical way of life. It's a practical religion. That's the reason Islam has a solution to the problems of humankind. And today one of the problems is that women are more in the world. And Islam has a solution. That doesn't mean everyone has more than one wife. There's a small percentage which is more. And this evil practice, if it stops, <coughs> of female infanticide and female fetricide, the women in the world will be in hundreds of millions. So in this case, where there's a requirement, a man can have more than one wife. And as far as they follow the Sharia rules, and Islam is the most practical religion. Hope this answers the question.